Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Tech Suit Connect Florida, our monthly event. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm from Orlando, Florida, and I'm going to be your host today. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the chat room. I love to know where you're tuning in from. Some people have already told us where they're tuning in from, and some people are not in Florida. So thank you for letting us know. So today's topic is going to be where to find grants. I do want to let you know that this is being recorded, so everybody who's registered will get the link to the video within 48 hours, or you can always check on TechSoup's YouTube channel and see the video in just about 48 hours. So just a little bit about TechSoup. Um, some of you already told me that you're members of TechSoup, but if you're not a member of TechSoup, it's free to join. All you have to do is have your 501c3, provide your EIN, they'll do the research, make sure you still have your 501c3 status, and you're a member. Then you get access to all of the wonderful products that they have. Some of it's free, like the webinars um, and the other hardware and software you get at a discount. TechSoup Connect is a worldwide network. As you can see the map of the globe, they're everywhere in over 43 different countries. So um, they, their reach expands wide and TechSoup is the bridge that brings tech solutions and services for good two nonprofits, they have over hundred partners. So enough about that. I know you, some of you have been here, you heard the story. I wanna get this out of the way cause we need your help. I need your help as the TechSoup Connect Florida um, coordinator. I need your help. We need event producers. What are the event producers? Somebody who's doing just what I'm doing. You're being the host and you invite someone to speak to talk about things that nonprofits need to hear whether it's technology, hardware, software, we need somebody to market, help spread the word about these events. We need speakers. I know a lot of you, if you're a nonprofit, you still wear a lot of different hats. Some of you are chefs, some of you are all kinds of, you wear all kinds of hats. So, and you probably know a lot of things in the nonprofit sector. Why don't you be a guest? Why don't you be a guest speaker? And we need chat room hosts. So I would love if you would come on and if you're interested, just send me an email at asimons at techsoup or just drop your information um, directly to me in the chat. You can send me your name, your phone number, and a way to reach out to you. Um, speaking of help and partnership, I want to introduce Erica Woods, who is Erica and um, what's your partner's name? I'm sorry, Steve. Steve, got it. They are over Tech for Good Tampa. So I want to give them the floor for a few moments to tell them, tell you about um, their organization. Thanks, Erica and Steve, for both being here. Of course. Thanks for having us. So I've been part of the, the TechSoup Tech Connect um, community since late 2014. Um, I was one of the, the founders of the Baltimore Group, uh, met so many amazing technology folks and nonprofits. And then I was really delighted when I was moving to Florida to see in our uh, organizer group that they were launching a group in Tampa. Um, so I, I joined as a co-organizer in Tampa. It's been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. Um, and Steve joined as a co-organizer. Oh, Randy, can you get to that Sabrina? And then, so <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. So we met with Aretha a couple of weeks ago for the first time. And it's awesome to have a couple different groups in Florida, especially um, our group. We host same concept, one event a month we tend to focus on more technology topics. Um, so it's a really, really good kind of supplement and complement to what uh, Aretha and the, the Orlando group is planning. Um, we are gonna remain on Meetup. So if you are interested in more of the technical topics and Steve, what are some of the, we've done cybersecurity. We just did project management last week. Our next one is gonna be on different online uh, donation plugins, such as, um, you know, Give Lively. Um, what are some of the other technical topics we've done, Steve? So we've done sessions on different CRM systems. We've done a Microsoft overview with uh, one of the speakers actually that works for Microsoft that joined us. Um, we did security, you talked about CRM, uh, let me actually just pull up the website and drop the link in as well. Great, all topics that we all need as people who have nonprofits. Yeah, a lot of the focus has been on uh, social media, website design, website development, you know, the different platforms that are out there, just all the questions that nonprofits have regarding their, their core technology. 
Yeah, and a couple more. We've done some data sessions. So if you've heard of tools like Tableau or Power BI, which is a Microsoft tool to help you just kind of organize your data and put it in together, uh, put it into like a dashboard or reports for even your, uh, you know, your board or kind of an annual impact report. So um, I just dropped the link in there, but we record our stuff. So if you want to uh, attend any of our upcoming sessions, just join our meetup group. And then if you wanna access any of those recordings, you can access them just off that link. Um, and Aretha, thanks for giving us the floor for a minute or two. Thank you so much. And it's okay, everybody, to go ahead and tap on that link. It will not take you out of this Zoom meeting. It'll open up another window. So you definitely wanna save those links. So um, as I, let me get back to my right slide one moment. <laughs> okay, before I do that, I do wanna give you a friendly reminder of our next, um, Zoom meeting, and that's going to be October 21st um, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The topic is developing and leveraging meaningful partnerships with corporations. That's another thing that we all have to do, especially if you're not keeping up with your grant writing. So now to the topic at hand. As I mentioned before, I was asking um, just to get a feel of who is already a member of TechSoup because this is number, the number one thing that all nonprofits want to know where to find grants. Um, how do I find grants? And right now, GrantStation, who is one of our partners, has a, a savings event, excuse me, has a savings event. And normally GrantStation is $6.99 if you just go to grantstation.com. If you're a member of TechSoup, it's $1.99 a year. Now, I've been a professional grant writer for over 20 years. Um, now I just do courses. I've been a grant reviewer on the local, federal, and state level. And I used to pay $200 a month just to have access to a grant database. But through TechSoup and our partnership with GrantStation, tomorrow, starting tomorrow, there and Wednesday, you pay $99 just to have access to this huge database. So I'm going to show you, we're going to get into that in just a moment, but I just wanted to, to tell you about that. And I'll be popping the link in in just a moment. Okay. So before I do that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and find out um, who is a, hi, Julie, how are you? It's so great to see you. Who is a grant writer or have written grants before? Let me know. And Julie, I'm so glad you're here. So you can pop in that link for me. <laughs> Who is a grant writer or have written grant before? And you don't have to be a professional. Good, written proposals for a consulting room. Beautiful. Not a grant writer, but do write them. I get it. Same thing, but I, I get what you're saying though. I get what you're saying. Awesome. So just a few people, but all of you are probably nonprofits, either you're having somebody write the grants for you, proposal writing, beautiful. So all of you that have not written a grant, do you hire a grant writer? Put a one in the chat room if you hire a grant writer. I've written grant applications and received grants. Go, Margie, go. Have written grants and applications, great. Yes, Erica, you've hired a grant writer. Okay, great, Consul or consultant. This is good to know because even if you hire a grant writer or consultant, you still have to know what's going on, right? And not only that, as your own, the nonprofit, you have to be grant ready, which means that you have to give them the information. And so it's just like you going out to buy a house. Um, you, you don't just rely on the realtor to find your house. You own the realtor website looking yourself. And oftentimes you will find the house before the realtor finds the house. This is just like Grant Station. Oftentimes, you're going to find the grant that'll match for you before your grant writer will. So I want to go to the website, and I'll share my screen in just a moment to let you see what it's like to navigate through Grant Station. Good. Thank you for putting that link in there for me. Okay. And let me know if you're able to see my screen. Are, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Okay, so I'm logged into GrantStation. Um, if you've never been here, as, again, this is, this is um, I don't want to name other databases, but usually 
the funders, they don't have time to find you. If Walmart wants to give a grant, that's not going to send a notice out. That's not in their marketing strategy, send a notice out to all nonprofits all over the U.S. They're going to send it to somebody who can get the, disseminate the information out to all the nonprofits. And nonprofits who are serious about finding grants and writing grant proposals, they will go to a database like this. So having a subscription, you're going to have to have a subscription, whether it's GrantStation or another one. But I'm telling you, for $99, you cannot beat this because not only do they have the list of funders, I'm going to go to that in a moment. When you go to find grant makers and say it's U.S. charitable. So this is every charitable organization in the United States that has grants. Then if you go to U.S. federal, that's federal grants. Um, state government, you're, you're talking about your local government that has grants. And they even have Canadian um, charitable organizations. I know no one here. This is not Canada. This is Florida and the U.S. But even if you um, were searching for international grants, you would click on that link. So let's go to U.S. charitable. So if I go there and what you do now, this is not a grant writing class. So I'm, I'm here, I'm gonna answer uh, as many questions as I can, but I may not be able to you know, show you everything. So please um, feel free to put your question in the chat room. So when you go to the US charitable and if you scroll down, you'll see basically it tells you how to search and what's in here, independent. Um, foundations, family foundations, community and corporate foundations. They have corporate giving programs. Um, there's so much here. And if you, excuse me, so sorry, I'm stepping away. I keep trying to get um, an animal from coming in here with me. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Okay. So if I would go to area, areas of interest, so everybody has their keyword, their one or two words that describe what you do. That's what we call a keyword or key term. And so if I would go here and type in or click on, excuse me, click on areas of interest, these are the keywords, arts and culture, civic affairs, um, education. And you know, if I were to uh, click on education, then there are other keywords. So you, as you see, there are multiple layers to your keyword. So if I go to, let's go to um, STEM education. I click on that. Then you'll see right here, you have 30, 100, I was gonna say 36 pages, 136 pages of results because I did all of the US. So any word that has that particular keyword in it, this is what you do. Now, if you wanted to narrow it down to just your state, which is what you probably want to do, then you would choose your state. You would narrow down to your state, okay? So I would do the same thing um, if I were to do um, education or healthcare. So let me just click on one. Um, let's see, let's go to California. And, and everybody knows um, if, if it's your first time searching through a grant station, this is, kind of what you'll see. You'll see the application process um, here. They tell you the application guidelines on the foundation's website. And there's usually a link to their website. All their information is over here. Contact information, their application must be submitted online. So as you know, we're in the tech world. So everything is done electronically. So definitely have, that's why when I tell people you have to be grant ready, you, you have to have for those of you who have not written a grant, you, are, you have to have information to give to a grant writer to be able to flow the right for you. But if I was looking, California, here's the contact information for that funder. Um, here's the total giving that they've given. And this is the grant range that they give. They give three to one, oh, excuse me, $10,000. I'm gonna say $100,000 or $1,000. So the average grant, they let you know is $6,000. So. This is very key. And this is what I love about these databases because there's no trying to figure out, you know, should I write a grant for 50,000 because we need 50,000? No, they're telling you this is what the grant range is. So this is a question that people always ask. Well, if I need 50,000, what do I do? Well, then you make your 50,000 budget and you pull 10,000 and maybe even want to go down to 3,000, just depend. Because once you look at the 
the RFP, the request for proposal, is going to go deeper. There's layers to this. It's going to go deeper and tell you exactly what they're funding. So if you go in here, you can see they said eligible applicants, therapy service providers. What does that mean? You probably have to go a little bit further in there. Here's some restrictions. They do not give building funds. So that's another thing. They do not pay for conference, seminars, or workshops. They do not sponsor events. So that's one thing that you can pull from your budget and not ask them for. This is a, one of the big mistakes that some people make when they're grant writing. They'll put the whole kitchen sink in there. And they said, you obviously didn't look at the requirements or the restrictions. So those are the things you pull from your application. So each application it will be unique and it will be strictly following the funder's guidelines. That's the main key thing. You have to follow the funder's guidelines. So I'm going to stop for a moment and see if there are any questions in the chat room. I cannot see your face because I have my screen um, in front of you. Feel free to unmute yourself since we have a small group and ask your question. I know there's got to be some questions at this moment. And thank you for putting that link in. Where are the 990? What are the 990, Laura, on the screen? Okay, so this, this is the 990 that belongs to that funder. Because as you know, every 501c3 must give away, excuse me, must file a 990. And so every charitable organization that gives funding, they have to file a 992. So you can click on that 990 to see their report. And this is how a lot of people find out who they gave to. If you have, I won't say competition, but if you have somebody you're collaborating with or that you want to collaborate with in your city and you see that this, this funder gave them um, money, then you can look at that funder's 990 and see, oh, they gave them $10,000 and it even tells you what they gave it for. So that is what, that's what the 990 is. So you can always check um, the funder's 990. You can check any nonprofit's 990, um, Walmart Foundation, Pepsi Foundation, any nonprofit's 990, even your 990 is public information. Um, any other questions? That was a great question. Any other questions? I can hear somebody unmuting themselves. Okay, another thing that I love about GrantStation, go ahead. I, I saw on there that it said that like for that particular one, it said therapy providers, um, I think what it is, yeah, something along those lines, therapy service providers. Mm -hmm. We have a mental health specialist on our staff. Um, so if we were to apply for that, even though we're not just a therapy service provider, how does that work? You have to just look at this to see more specifically what they require? That is a great question. And I'm glad that you asked that question. And what I tell people, when the funder puts their information here, it's best to call or email and find out, say, just the question you asked me to say, would I qualify? Because I, I haven't gone deep into this grant, but this, this could be vague to me. You know, therapy service providers, what does therapy mean? Is it equine therapy? Is it mental health therapy? So you can call them and ask them, you know, specifically. And this is what I love about being able to have access to this database. And I'm telling you, $99 that's, I don't know, I, I don't know no one's situation, but I'm telling you for one year, this is amazing. That was a great question. Any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Again, I cannot see your faces, so I can't see if you raise your hand or, or anything like, so please feel free to unmute yourself. Okay, so no question at this time. So as I was saying, um, you, this is where you would find grants. And again, you have your um, charitable, you have your federal, um, your state government. And then what I love about this as well, so many tools in here, because a lot of times you, you know, go to a grant writing class and a lot of times it's, it's so much coming at you, even tonight you're probably writing down things that I'm saying and you're probably trying to see what's on the screen, but it's too much to do at one time. As you know, writing a grant, finding a grant, it takes hours of research because you have to make sure you're a match. And so that time, even for a grant writer to review or look for, search for a grant, it takes them hours 
to make sure that you are matched. So this is why you need to know your keywords and you'll search through this database on GrantStation by using your keywords, by using your um, geographical area and that narrows it down for you. Then what I love also, they have a lot of um, tools in here. So tips on writing your proposal. And you know what? Who does this right here? Listen, I'm gonna show you this. I would, I would pay for this, just for this um, winning grant proposal. They have a competition every year and they have people sending their winning grant proposals, the proposals that they won their grant with. And then they will choose the winner, but you get copies of these sample proposals. So look at these, these are the 2021 20, sample proposals. If I click here, Again, this is not the class for this, but I'm just showing you all the things that you have in here. So um, these are the ones that won. Uh, and if I click on here, I, and I'm gonna click on just to show you because this is the real deal. I Like I said, the, the database that I paid for before I was paying $200 a month. So you do the math for a year. They didn't have this where you actually saw a sample grant. And that right there is priceless because that's where people get stuck sometimes. I had, I was doing a, um, a grant uh, session last night, a grant writing session last night with veterans. And that's one of the questions. People are like, well, do you have any samples? Do you have any samples? Well, here's a sample. So if I click on that, can you see my screen again? Because sometimes when you open a different window, you can't see the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, I need somebody to unmute themselves and let me know if you can still see my screen with the sample grant proposal. We yes, can we see can. your screen. Great, awesome. Thank you. I appreciate. It. <laughs> Thank you. It's hard multitasking. Okay, so now here is their their sample grant proposal. So it says, please provide a six page narrative. Woo! And answer these six questions. This was the information that was um asked of them. So a lot of times they will give you instructions. Now, I really shouldn't be going through this. This was about where to find grants, but I think this this is it's worth doing. Um, showing you some of the tools on GrantStation. So um, I'm going to scroll down and you can see this is very lengthy, but this is the kind of information that you have to provide when you're going for real grants. I mean, a grant is just a gift. So if I give you $10, that is a grant. But when you're going for grants that, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 100,000, um, six figure grants, then you really have to put in the work. And so they provide you samples um, here. I'm gonna go back, um, you click around and you probably find one that's very similar to what you do. Um, here, a haven for women and children. Who, who doesn't, which nonprofit that you know in your city does not help um, women and children? Uh, if, you, if you can mute yourself out, unless you have a question, that would be great. So if I would click on that, then I would see you know, their sample grant proposal. So they have their executive, summa executive summary here which you know everyone must have when you're writing a grant. Scroll down, you got the organizational background. You know, you have to have the demographics in there, the population served. Everybody know, has to know their numbers. You must know your demographics when you're writing a grant. They even have um, statistics in here and they're quoting. So if you, you have something where you, I don't have to tell you that. <laughs> the organizational background. So again, what, what I'm trying to show you is the tools on where to find grants and not just where to find grants. You have the database here, you have the writing tools here, then you have samples here, and then a lots of online education. Um, TechSoup also provides online education, but I'm telling you, this is amazing. Want to compare grant seeking to other similar organizations? Okay, great. She put a link in here. You could Great, thank you so much. You put a link in here, click on that. Again, if you click on these links, you will not leave the Zoom. It'll just open up to a different window. It's great to have that window ready when you are ready to um, look at this. If you're not a member of TechSoup, if I were you, I would become a member. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything to become a member of TechSoup. Um, this this uh, 99 dollar savings event. It ends Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So that's that's eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time for all of my friends in Florida. So um, spread the word for anybody who knows, uh, you know that 
want to write a grant, needs to learn how to write a grant, if you're working with a grant writer and they do not have access to this, they may be using the library, who knows what they're using, they should invest um, in GrantStation. They may not be a member of TechSoup and get this $99 savings, but it's still, it's $199 for the whole year as a member of TechSoup. If you're not a member of TechSoup, it's $699. So you see the value that TechSoup brings. So again, the membership is free. I want to open the floor to any questions. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and look at your faces so that I can conversate with you. Um, feel free to ask any questions. If you want me to go back to something, the floor is yours. I'll hop in here. This is Janine. Um, I had a question and that is, um, do I get a specific membership number in TechSoup that I have to put in the form for GrantStation? No, so there is, once you become a member, are you a member right now? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, okay. I, I kind of think that I am, um, okay. but I don't you know can. exactly how it works. I mean, I've been attending the webinars and everything. Oh, okay. So the webinars are free. That, I'm glad you mentioned that. You don't have to be a member to attend the free webinars. Okay. But if you, if you are a member of TechSoup, you can go to TechSoup.org and in the, in the, in the corner... Matter of fact, let me share my screen. Because, oh, okay, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah, this will make it so much easier, I know. Uh, one second. Because I, I just don't know. I mean, yeah, if, yeah. if we can get some clarity. <laughs> Absolutely, no problem. Okay, back. And here we go. This is not it. This is it. Okay, great. All right, can you see my screen? You know, I got all these windows open. It says you've started screen sharing. Okay, it, it should be coming up. Okay, yep. All right, good to go. Okay, so when you get here, okay, you see the Grant Station special right here, and it says register here. But if you are uh, a member of TechSoup, you hit log in, and say you forgot your um, password, whatever email that you think you use, then you could use that email right here, and it'll tell you reset your password oh you i see your, i see yeah okay mm -hmm. okay okay and for those of you who are not right here you just hit click a join text okay um, perfect perfect okay, okay. excellent okay. excellent but then on the form itself it just knows if you're a member or you just click the box it says yes. you're a member so okay. if i go back to to the main screen and i click get grant station waiting for it to um open up here we go. And then because I'm a member, I'm going to log in. You see what was 99 and said one. Where was this on, on the website? Um oh, as soon as you go, catalog. No, um, well, it is on the catalog as well, but right now, because of the promotion, as soon as you go to TechSoup.org, it's right there on the landing page. Okay. Yeah. And 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 those of you who, who are members, as soon as you um go to this page for the product catalog or click on that landing page link, click here, log in, and you'll be able to make your purchase. So there we go. Thank you. Okay, for... that was very helpful. Aretha, can I can I jump in? Yeah, please. Okay. Um I Janine, I just looked your name up in our database and I didn't see it. And I wanted to clarify that um first you want to uh, register yourself as an individual and then you will need to um associate yourself with an organization right so, and i am a 501c3 so do you need the ein number and all that that would yes. be yeah part of the questionnaire yes so first you would you would register janine Fennell. then you would associate yourself with an organization and your organization may or may not be in our database already so you'll want to check that and um the the client services team will verify yeah. So they'll confirm um, that your EIN, that your, your status is current with the IRS. Yes. And then they will qualify you. Okay. And um, how long this, was the turnaround time on that? It, the process could take a week. So it's, it's oh. you know, but we will be having another promotion in February. For Grant Station? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm When? Yes. And you guys got me all excited. We, we don't have the date yet, but you know what? If if you like, I said, if you put your um, email that you registered, if you think you registered your business, your nonprofit, yeah. and say I forgot my password, 
it may, you may be in there because a lot of people say, well, I think I'm a member. I signed up years ago, but I never used it. So just check it that way. Yeah, I just don't know. I don't remember filling out the detailed EIN information, but okay, um, okay I'll double check it. Okay. Yeah. If you don't remember doing the EIN, you may not be a <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, okay. Well, this is good to know process. going forward. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. What'd you say, Julie? I just said it is a two-step process and a lot of people stop when they um, register themselves as an individual and don't realize that this is an organizational registration as well that needs to be verified and qualified. So it is two-step. Um, I think you're exactly right. You hit it on the nail. I, I think you're, yeah. Is there, okay. I wonder if there's any way you guys can clarify that a little bit more. Um, we, we have made some improvements. Um, I, if an individual register, uh, registers themselves, an email will automatically be sent out if the process has not um, gone forward. Oh, so and when, when did you start doing that? Maybe a year ago. I, oh. it, I, I'm not positive. I've been oh, with then I should have received that, huh? Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay, because I just found out about you guys in the past year, so okay. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Um, I see um, Susan says, I am a member, but wasn't represented who communicated with TechSoup. I didn't have access to the association number. I called this number. And they helped me change the contact person and access um, the association number. That's good. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. That's, that's good news. I'm glad to hear that. Um, any other questions? So are you saying you have an 800 number we can call? Yes. Oh, so would that expedite it? I don't know. Why don't you try it? Who knows? <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah, I'm serious. Why not? Try it. I can't say no. Never say never. Any other questions? Well, I want to ask you, if there are no questions, what is your one takeaway from tonight? What is the one thing that you learned? To help you or something you didn't know yes you need money to make money hey you need money to make money and suzanne says she it did for her she just did did it two hours ago excellent thank you suzanne by calling good deal thank you so much see this is how we share we're community anyone else don't make me be a school teacher and go down the, the line and call your name out tanja it, what was your one takeaway from tonight? Um, my one takeaway, I guess I would say, is the fact that this um, access to grants is very, very needful for a nonprofit. And I'm just glad that I'm on this call. So I'm actually trying to rejoin because the word, password and the sign up that I use, they're saying it's not valid. But I actually just like the fact that I can utilize the, this platform to kind of um, go forward because I'm the last um, Zoom we had, you had Anthony, um, gosh, what's his name on here? And I signed up with him. So he's coaching me along. So I'm going to try to continue to, to invest in myself, you know, so that I can become better. This is new to me. So I, I like the fact that I now know where I can go. Great, great, great. And a lot of it is new. You said something powerful. When people start nonprofits, they um, it's not like a for-profit business. You can just start it and just take off. I apologize for going off screen. Um, but when you start a nonprofit, there's so many other moving pieces to it. And then the way you have to raise money. So it's definitely, you know, one of the tools that you definitely need to learn how to write grants. If even if you hire a grant writer, at least you know where to find them and you have the tools to be able to give it to a grant writer. Julie, you are so helpful. Thank you so much for putting everything in, in the um, chat room. I really appreciate it. Any other questions? This isn't a question, but I don't know how many people since we're kind of in the Orlando area have connected with the Edith Bush Institute for Nonprofits and that. There's a whole bunch of training and different things from grant writing to management to HR to all kinds of issues that you can schedule for and they do have scholarships if you become a member for that. Um, lots of good training, not as much technology as TechSoup, but it's a good nonprofit resource for all nonprofits. It, it really is. I used to teach um, some of their classes. So it really is. 
What was the name of that again? Could you kindly repeat? It's the Edith Bush and it's E-D-Y-T-H-E Bush. I think it's the Institute for Nonprofit something right. or other. It's if through you, Rollins. Yeah, I was going to say, if you Google Rollins College of Philanthropy, it'll probably pop up because okay, that's what it used you. to be called. Okay. Yeah, it's got a long name that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, any other so, questions? Aretha, ahead. I have a question. Yes, hi, Margie. Um, hi. Um, I wrote a grant, this was years ago when I was directing another nonprofit. I wrote a grant and I was refused the, the grant. I wrote an application. I was refused mm -hmm. the grant when they told me I did not provide enough financial information. Mm -hmm. I put down every expense that we had and i'm i i still to this day wonder why they didn't didn't think that was enough all i we had no bills other than water electricity internet and and phone that was all we had and i gave them that but everything mm -hmm. else was provided for us the building and everything was provided for us and we were all volunteers and drove our own cars i mean if you if you write a grant, is there any and you don't uh, an application and you don't get it? Is that should we should we contest it? How, what it's, do you do? It's not a contest. Uh, you don't want to okay. do that because you're trying to build a relationship um, with this funder. Because sometimes no doesn't mean no. It means not right now in the grant world. You want to write a thank you letter. Thank you for reviewing my grant. Um, we appreciate the time that you took. Can you tell us what we could have done better? Um, would you, you know, take a phone call? Will you, can we have coffee? Would you come out, invite them to one of your events? They may say no, but they will remember you. And a lot of times getting that thank you, because like, very few people come back and say thank you. Very mm -hmm. few people come back and say thank you. And so sometimes getting that letter, they might get, hmm, you know what? Even though we didn't give you a grant, we know someone else down the line um, that, <laughs> I need to work at the State Department, excuse me, somebody put, I need to work at the State Department. We know someone else down the line or someone around the corner that gives to your type of organization. So always write a thank you anyway letter. I will tell you a quick story. Um, I have a friend, um, Sandra, I wish she was coming tonight. She said she was coming, but she didn't make it. Um, I mentored her for years and she wrote a, uh, a grant for the Junior League of Fort Worth and four years in a row, didn't get, the, didn't get the grant. I said, write a thank you anyway letter. On the fifth year, she didn't apply. Cause she's like, I'm tired, I'm, I'm done. I'm not applying anymore, they're gonna deny me. They called her and they said, Sandra, um, you didn't apply for the grant. And she was like, well, yeah, you know, she was hemming and hawing. And they're like, well, we've been watching you and we wanna give you $75,000. Not only did they give her $75,000 the very next year, they got volunteers from the community and they built her a brand new house for her transition home because she helped women coming out of prison. They built her a house. She didn't have to pay for a can of paint, a nail, a bed, a refrigerator, nothing. So you write that thank you anyway letter. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. When you're, when you're saying that letter, is it in the snail mail or does um, email <laughs> count? Email, email works too, how you communicate with them. Um, I would do both. I would send that that snail mail and the email as well. Yeah, because I was Make raised in snail mail, not email, but I know some people are busy and just. Yeah, but believe it or not, um, that, you know, mail is such a personal touch. You will open it, especially if you write on the envelope handwritten, you will tend to open like, who is this? And you're curious. So great question. Any other questions? Okay, well, uh, Aretha, this is Janine. Yes. I just wanted to comment. Um, I was very impressed with Grant Station because I work in a climate change resilience area. And uh, you just really, it was like bingo because it was at North uh, Carolina Conservation Trust on resilience. So that, that was really just right on. Wow. See, sometimes you just have to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So there's no more questions. I'm going to give you back your time. And I always tell everybody who comes to all of our webinars, I know you're busy taking care of other people, but make sure you take time to take care of yourself. And I'll see you guys soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. You're welcome.